Welcome back to a, another video on the Duo Network Gateway, or DNG for short. In this video series, we've been taking a look at how we install the DNG, what it's used for, and uh, some of the benefits that it can bring. And we're about halfway through the installation now of getting the DNG up and running and to a point where we can actually access uh, our applications without the need for a uh, VPN. So in our last video we looked at the initial Duo network gateway configuration that's required and uh, we, we got through that and we got to a point now where we're at the uh, configuration of the authentication source. So when you get to this point um, you've done the initial DNG configuration and now we can go down to the authentication source and I'll just log back in here because what we need to do is we need to uh, tie in our primary authentication for the DNG and uh, in our example we're using the uh, duo single sign-on in order to uh, achieve this. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through these requirements here on this screen um, which is essentially documented in, uh, in the duo documentation here um, and then we'll hopefully get to a point where we've tied in our um, authentication source. So as I said in this demonstration I'm going to be using duo single sign on here um, there is other options that you can use um, as a SAML 2.0 identity provider. Duo Access Gateway, uh, just a note that that is being uh, as end of life, that is going away. So uh, we won't probably be talking about that or, or touching that. Uh, and the other options available here we will be using uh, in this uh, demonstration. So the first step here is to configure uh, single sign-on and we've already done this in the previous video where we tied in our on-premise Active Directory uh, with Duo for SSO. So that step for us is done. If you've not seen that video, I do recommend that you go back to take a look at that video, especially if it's something that you are looking to do as well. So we're essentially on this step here and what it's telling us to do first and foremost is to uh, log into the Duo admin panel and we're going to start by protecting uh, an application which is in this case going to be the uh, Duo network gateway. So I'll just head over to my admin panel, hopefully I'm still signed in and no I'm not so I will sign back in. Okay, so once signed into your Duo admin panel, we need to go to Applications, Protect an Application, and then we'll, what we need to do is we type DNG, and uh, we've got a few options here. And we're looking for this particular one here. So two-factor authentication with single sign-on. So we'll click uh, Protect, or you can have a look at the documentation, which more than likely is going to uh, bring you to the Duo documentation. Uh, as I say, you can see here two-factor authentication with single sign-on. That's what we're using. So we'll click on uh, Protect for that. And there we go. We've got some uh, configuration steps we now need to uh, run through to get up and running. So once we've signed in, we've clicked Protect mm -hmm. Application. Um, as I say, we're going to need this information now to get set up on the uh, DNG as well itself. Uh, so we move on to uh, step three, which is uh, the domain name, which is the uh, FQDN of the uh, Duo Network Gateway. So we specified that in the last video. So if we just go back here, we can specify that here. So it was portal.networkwizkid.co.uk. And then once we've done that, we can then move on to uh, step four. Um, and in most cases, unless you've got, uh, if you're using uh, different attributes, this is probably gonna stay the same uh, in this uh, particular step here. So we're not going to uh, mess about with, uh, 
with custom attributes here we can we can leave this uh, as standard here in the settings section we can give this uh, a name so we can call this in our case i'm just going to call this dng demo and then we're going to need to uh, download the certificate and we're going to need the the metadata as well so once we've done that um let's just first and foremost actually save that okay there we go that's fine so now we've saved that uh, we can then go to uh, configuring the uh, duo network gateway section which is on the dng so we need to be under this section here configuring saml identity provider which is here and then we're going to copy the entity id uh, from the admin panel uh, metadata section and paste it into the NEID here. So very straightforward, we copy this section here and then we paste it into here. And then it gives you an example and we're going to do the same with the single sign-on uh, URL and the single uh, logout URL as well uh, before downloading the certificate. So let's just copy these across quickly. So single sign on, we'll paste that into there, and then we'll also copy the single logout URL into here. And then this is where we download the certificate from here, and then we'll upload that certificate now. So that's the certificate file placed in there as well and uh, this is where you can also again specify alternate saml username attributes instead of uh, the name id uh, as i as it pretty much says there leave that unchecked and then enforce the email domain only accept primary authentication from users specified in uh, the domain that you specify so um this is optional as it says here and basically what it's going to do is it's only going to allow um, email addresses within the domain that you specify to log into the uh, DNG uh, if the username is basically using the email address. So let's say for example kelvin at uh, networkwiskid.co.uk so if I specified that networkwiskid.co.uk domain and that would only allow uh, that specific domain to uh, log in if I tried with any other domain it wouldn't wouldn't allow it so for this purpose uh, of the demonstration we'll just leave this as it is now so let's go back to our DNG and what we're going to do is we'll just save settings and we can see now that those settings there have been saved and we can see that the uh, certificate there is also uh, uploaded now. Well, the DNG documentation gives you some information about the uh, universal prompt as opposed to the default traditional prompt um, and uh, basically how to enable that if you uh, either have a new deployment or existing uh, DNG uh, how to how to do that as well so we'll uh, leave that for now and that basically takes us to the end of that uh, particular setup where we tie in our primary authentication source so what we'll do next is we'll get into the meaty parts now where we start looking at how we can protect uh, different types of applications so that being the web application as well as the uh, SSH session and lastly the RDP uh, sessions as well. So do look out for those upcoming videos.